A few weeks ago I made a video about simple copper plating for 3D prints. In this video I'd like to step it up a notch and show you how you can do the same with a few different types of metal. Also cover some troubleshooting techniques and also how you can plate one object with multiple types of metal at the same time. To demonstrate these techniques I'm using this wonderful pendant designed by Sebastiano de Grazia who does some wonderful jewellery and miniature work. I'll put a link to this pendant and to his profile in the description below. The reason I'm using a complicated pendant like this is because most plating videos that I've found use a very simple flat shape, like a coin or something like that, without much detail. And this is really easy to do. So using a pendant like this with lots of grooves, lots of detail, will start to highlight some of the problems that you'll actually encounter while doing practical electroplating. Different from last video, we're going to create our electrolyte using electrolysis. It's a super handy technique to know because it's not metal specific. You can use it for various metals like copper, nickel, zinc, tin, silver, and even some alloys like brass and bronze. To make your electrolyte, you'll need distilled white vinegar. I'm just using some cleaning vinegar. You'll need table salt. This will make our electrolyte more conductive and you'll need some scrap metal, the same metal that you actually want to plate with. In this example, we're going to use nickel. You'll need a non-metallic container and a power supply or battery pack with a voltage between three and six volts. Pour your vinegar into the non-metallic container. Add salt, up to one tablespoon of salt for every liter of vinegar. Insert your electrodes at opposite ends of the container and connect the positive terminal of your power supply to one and the negative to the other. The positive electrode or the anode will start to break down and transfer ions to the negative electrode or the cathode. You will know this is working immediately when you see a stream of bubbles coming off the cathode. I tend to leave this for 10 to 12 hours but you can still get a usable electrolyte in only a few hours. Copper will form a blue electrolyte, nickel will become green. Zinc and tin don't have a colour. The electrolyte can be used repeatedly for a long period of time. I do occasionally filter my electrolytes with some cloth just to remove some of the debris that's built up over time. Here you can see my finished nickel acetate electrolyte. There's some undissolved debris in the bottom. I'll filter that out before using it, but that's not overly necessary. If you're plating a 3D print or another non-conductive object, you'll need to give it a conductive coating. I've covered how to do this in my previous video, which I'll put a link to in the description. Once the part is prepped, it's important to keep it clean and not touch it with your bare hands. Any oils or other substances on the surface will interfere with the plating process. For most small parts, the easiest way to plate them is in an electrolyte bath. You can do this by lightly wrapping the part in some wire and suspending the part in an electrolyte solution. Agitating the electrolyte will help you get a uniform coating of metal around your object and will reduce the likelihood of your part burning. You can do this by hand, either by moving the part around or stirring the electrolyte. I use an aquarium pump so I can leave the part unattended for extended periods. Add the anode, which is the metal part that will be consumed to plate the other item. Connect the anode to the positive terminal of your power supply and the part you are plating to the negative side. You'll start to see a stream of bubbles coming off the part that you're plating. If you see bubbles coming from the anode, check your power supply as you've probably mixed up the positive and negative connections. You should check the part and turn it around periodically and a good layer of metal should be formed in 20 to 40 minutes, but the longer you leave it, the thicker the metal plate will be. Most of the ions flowing from the anode to the cathode will take the path of least resistance, which means that in a lot of cases, pockets in your objects will not plate well or even at all, no matter how long you leave them in the plating bath. You can see this exact problem on this pendant. I have two practical solutions to this problem. One is to brush plate the pocketed area. Brush plating is a technique generally used on parts that are too big to fit in a plating bath, but it can also be used to control exactly where metal will be deposited. The other is to mask the areas that are plating very well and allow ions to flow into those tricky areas and get an even plating everywhere. 
Brush plating can be done using a rag, a sponge, paintbrush, or a swab to carry the electrolyte and the anode directly to the part, so the part doesn't have to be submerged. Simply soak a rag in electrolyte, fold the anode into it, and slowly start to rub the rag across the surface that you want to plate. Since this pendant requires some intricate work, I've created a 3D printed pen to brush plate with. Electroplating is a rather slow process, so brush plating requires a high degree of patience. Another way that we can selectively plate items is by masking. I like to use liquid latex or petroleum jelly to coat areas that I do not want to plate. On this pendant, which I fully copper plated, I'm going to mask off one of the cats with liquid latex. It will allow me to nickel plate the remaining half and have a dual plated object. It's important that you wait for the liquid latex to fully dry before attempting to electroplate, otherwise it just washes off in the electrolyte. I'm going to leave this to plate for about 45 minutes and we should get a nice build up of nickel on the unmasked parts. Once your object is plated, there are various different things you can do to it. Like any metal, you can polish it. The metal plate is going to be very thin, so don't polish too vigorously otherwise you'll polish the metal right off. If you want your plated object to retain its shine, you might need to varnish it with a gloss clear coat, or if you want to go the other way and age the item, there are simple ways you can create a patina on different metals. I won't go into that in this video, but there's plenty of information available if you do a quick search. There are certain metals that do not play well together. You shouldn't copper plate directly onto steel, because it'll actually make your steel rust faster. What you can do, however, is nickel plate the steel and then copper plate it, which will protect the steel and give you a nice copper covering. Then there are highly reactive metals like aluminium or aluminum if you're from North America that do not play well with pretty much any metal. Some other little things I found while plating plastic parts is that tin and nickel both like to curl while they're plating. They'll curl enough that they'll actually start to pull your conductive coating off the plastic. What I find is it's best to plate with copper first and then plate nickel or tin on top of it. If you found this video interesting, please click the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. I'm Brody, and thanks for watching.